Thank you. Stand high, right here. Hi, Christine. Welcome. Take a seat. Great having you here. Drive trains. We haven't had that much of that topic on stage here. So, how are you doing? I have to talk with you about that first. One and a half days at the fair. Half of the colleagues have lost their voice. Are you okay? Absolutely. <laughs> voice wise, okay. <laughs> and also, great talks, great discussions. Yeah, absolutely. So. Very excited. Very excited. That's, that's great feedback. Well, 70% of electrical energy in the industry is used by drive trains. 70%. Yes. I mean, this is massive. Um, how does this fact resonate um, with the context of sustainability, which I just mentioned? What does it mean for sustainability and is it contradictory mm. um, to sustainability with our motors? Motors and drives are omnipresent throughout all industries and they need to be in order to generate industrial motion. So we find them in pumps, in fans, in compressors, conveyor belts and so on. So there's virtually no industrial sector out there which does not leverage the use of electric motor. They are simply indispensable. But the 70% of course are showing to us that there's a huge potential of energy and CO2 savings along the drivetrain and beyond. So using the most efficient hardware is contributing towards sustainability, of course. We apply digital solutions on top in order to reach the full potential of energy savings. So in other words, simulating the drivetrain, virtual commissioning, gathering real drivetrain data from the field and applying machine learning algorithms will make industries much more sustainable. Complementing these decarbonization use cases, predictive maintenance is another lever to become more productive. And this is also enabled by our portfolio, and Jonas will give us more insights on that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So bearing all that facts in mind has encouraged us to found a new and dedicated digital drivetrain organization to put an even stronger focus on our customers' challenges and to unlock the full potential of this domain. Mm -hmm. um, mission understood. You are taking that topic serious. You are leading this newly founded organization. But how can the digital drivetrain be a lever for sustainable motion? Mm -hmm. One aspect. Our portfolio for drivetrain design enables our customers to engineer and simulate the behavior of the drivetrain to understand how it will act before ordering it. And by that, we help our customers to reach at the right sizing of the drivetrain components and to avoid energy overconsumption. Another aspect is part of our IoT and analytics portfolio. We combine and link real drivetrain data from the field with a digital twin of the drivetrain components and we apply our machine and drive AI running on industrial edge or cloud-based. And in addition to providing the transparency regarding the health status of the drivetrain and the recommended maintenance measures to avoid unforeseen downtimes, we bring advantages to our customers as offering sustainable insights into the drivetrain as the basis for energy saving actions which create value add. So it's precisely all these combinations of all these levels that create the opportunity to raise energy efficiency to the next level. Mm -hmm. Great ex explanation, I have to say. It really kind of brings it down to the point what is important and what you guys are focusing on. Jonas, you are responsible for bringing the portfolio to the market. So all action, all eyes are on you. Do you have examples um, in the field that kind of explain what we already do? Of course, we have, we have many examples. Um, and a cool one is very close by. So in our production sites in Erlangen, we have a team which is taking care of the infrastructure there. Um, so like the clean room that you see here, all the infrastructure that is responsible to make the production up and running and to produce our, for example, Cinemics drives. So the infrastructure team set up a project called digitalization at infrastructure. They had four objectives. Objective number one, they wanted to reduce the maintenance cost. Number two, they wanted to minimize the manual interactions with the processes, both through condition monitoring. The third objective is plant availability, system availability, to be able to produce. 
Um, they wanted to do that via anomaly detection, finding and preventing failures before they happen. And last but not least, decarbonization. Reduce the energy footprint, the uh, CO2 footprint, and eventually become CO2 neutral at the end. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we applied our solutions. Um, a plug-and-play sensor called Semotix Connect 400 and also the respective analytic app, which is taking the field data and provides insights and recommendations to our team of infrastructure. And in the end, what they were able to achieve um, is quite concrete, and they had an impact only after a couple of weeks of operation of the overall system. So they found bearing problems, for example, uh, which led to, by exchanging them and replacing the bearings, which led to an increase of 5% of availability of this uh, product of this system. Um, they, we had a redundantly designed energy recovery system. By taking, or taking a look at it and finding inconsistencies in the operation, um, they were able to increase uh, the product lifetime by 33%, which is quite impressive and directly has an impact on the cost and on the machine lifetime. Um, a third point is that we were able to reduce the maintenance cost by 15%. And this decrease led, first of all, to a return on invest of less than one year. And secondly, um, also this savings, this 15%, cover the recurring cost uh, along the, the way, and therefore it's a no-brainer to install it. So it's, I think, a great example, Christine. A no-brainer, you say it. I mean, it's impressive facts which you are dropping here. And as you say, just after a few weeks, you saw first results. So it's not a matter of that you have to analyze things for a year before you exactly. get first results. So really cool. So we drink our own champagne, as we say. And uh, this is always what I like, that we can say, hey, Siemens is so big, we sell our solutions in-house to colleagues to try it in other departments. And that convinces then customers as well, because if we try it, it probably right. has to be good that our customers will go for it as well. So when I was walking over the booth, and that was quite often so far, I saw a similar case. Can you give us some insights here, please? Yeah, the use case that you are discussing or mentioning is in the water industry. So we have here, uh, and this uh, exhibit is actually based on a real customer case. We had a customer coming to us and asking, he wants to reduce um, the risk of downtimes. Because it's a critical infrastructure, water treatment plants, uh, water industry in general, um, any downtime has an impact on society. So they wanted to reduce the risk, but also reduce their cost, uh, OPEX in the end. So they approached us and asked, how can we do that? What we did is we went through them, uh, with them through their plant. We took a look at the application, the different types. How critical are they for the process? Do they have redundancies? Do these redundancies have an impact on the criticality? What type of data do we need? What level of quality does this data need to have? And then we defined the software and hardware solutions that we in the end implemented. So we used also Semotics Connect and C-Drive IQ Fleet, what I just explained. Mm -hmm. On top, for the very critical assets, we also used uh, the condition monitoring CMS 1200 for high-frequency information on the vibration side. Just a little supply for you, Jonas. Yes. You have the camera at the exhibit, so if you want, you can either talk about what you uh, just explained and we show the live feed from the exhibit onto the LED, or you want to go there? I'm not sure. No, we can just show it. That would okay. also be quite nice. Super cool. That okay, then let's nice. put the live feed from the exhibit here. We have Malisha, and I think um, we just need to know in which direction we got to go to show it. Well, I, I don't exactly know where, you, where, where she's standing, uh, but uh, in the end... Hold on. I thought, I thought the camera is at the exhibit, just talking to the director. Sorry, guys. No big deal. <laughs> okay, then we just keep on. Okay, and you see it's live, uh, so it's no fake. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we implemented our system, and uh, what the customer has as a benefit now is a 360-degree view on the condition of the overall system. So they know um, when possible problems will occur. They detect the operating points. Based on these operating points, they are able to do fingerprinting, anomaly detection, in order to prevent downtimes. Mm -hmm. We have on top to this, let's say, standard overall health condition of the applications and the plant, we have the possibility to also give insights on motor-specific failures and problems, like bearing problems, like uh, misalignments, like unbalances. So that also increases the 
um, quality of information that we provide to our customers. Um, and last but not least, we are measuring energy. Um, energy consumption in order to derive measures, in order to save cost in the end. Save cost by, uh, well, saving on maintenance, but also save cost by um, saving energy. And uh, what we are able to now help the customer with is we apply the predictive maintenance system, condition monitoring, if you want to say, and which is going towards resource efficiency because you can use the products longer than originally planned and then uh, when it's uh, breaking down. On the other side, uh, you are able to do energy saving via the transparency that we gain and able to save costs, therefore. And that's the overall system that we applied. So if you want to take a look at it, come to our booth. Um, Florian will show you where it is um, because it's actually providing a lot of value to our customers. But we have even more potential to, to go on and have more potential to go um, on with the digital drivetrain. Okay, it's, it seems like we have reached the limit. Like um, we've done everything to optimize and this is like the hard line. Florian, you're heading this department so there is a lot of pressure on you to even go on top of that limit now. Where do you see further potential for the digital drivetrain? Uh, oh yeah, we, we see quite big potential in, in many areas and therefore we drive with our digital and IoT portfolio the convergence of the real and virtual drivetrain to offer next level motion analytics, modeling and simulation as a service. So how can this look like? I give you an example. Based on our hardware and software-defined connectivity solutions, we receive trace data from the field device, which allows us to capture the real behavior of the drivetrain and the respective load, a driven machine, for example. Then we use this data to compare reality with a simulation model. And as a next step, we feed this real drivetrain data into the simulation model and train entire system model characteristics. So this model training is required to get the virtual and real-world behavior as synchronous as possible. So we use real-world data to adapt the system model to accurately describe the overall system. And now, building on top, we can start investigating different scenarios by changing parameters, and simulate the optimization of the overall system for maximizing energy efficiency or for throughput purposes. We can also use this as a basis for enhanced anomaly detection by running the simulation based on the input from the real system and a deviation of the real output from the simulated output shows a change and indicates that the system behavior is different and needs maintenance. Also thinking further, transferring these trained system models and digital twins to the engineering phase of new drive applications will increase productivity tremendously and save a lot of time. So overall, it is our ambition to provide all these as automated loops and services to our customers for them to execute all this as quick and fluent as possible. So, of course, as we have heard before, Siemens Accelerator Platform mm -hmm. also plays a vital role mm -hmm. in our future. So, um, we are looking forward, as Jonas mentioned, to welcome you at our exhibit to discuss your challenges in making your drive applications more sustainable and to show you how to benefit from our portfolio. So, as you can see up there, um, you find us just to your right and can't await to meet you and see you there. Mm. That was where we were wishing that the camera signal should have come from in order to show the yeah. machine here live on stage. But um, dear viewers, dear audience, you definitely can walk over there and take a look by yourself in order to get all the information what just has been presented here by Florian and Jonas. I say a big thank you to the two of you. Great presentation. And um, you took the mission. So we're going to take you serious. Hannover Mess is coming up. You got five months to you develop bet. something you new. Bet. <laughs> okay, challenge accepted. Thank you. A big you applause much. to you. Thank you very Florian much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great presentation. Bye -bye. Thank you.